Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to It's Rainmaking Time. This is Kim Greenhouse. It is critical that you learn about how the honeybees have been mysteriously disappearing across the planet, literally vanishing from their hives. There's something known as colony collapse disorder, a phenomenon that has brought beekeepers into crisis in an industry responsible for producing apples, broccoli, watermelon, onions, cherries, and a hundred other fruits and vegetables. There is something going on on the planet that deserves your prompt attention, and it is my great pleasure to bring forth the co-producers and directors of a movie called The Vanishing Bees. We are welcoming George Langworthy and Miriam Hanane to It's Rainmaking Time. Both have massive broadcast experience, documentary experience, research experience, and television experience. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome them. Thank you both for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Let's start off with you, George. You've had longstanding work in documentary, and so have you, Miriam. What brought you to focusing an entire documentary film on the vanishing of the bees? What first alerted you that there was something deadly serious about this? Well, I found out about the story um, right as it was breaking, and I thought it was really, you know, interesting kind of mystery about bees just leaving their hive, leaving the queen, leaving their babies. And then as I started to learn more about bees and honeybees and the agriculture industry, I realized it was just a story of massive importance. They're a sentinel of the environment and reflect the health of the environment, and they're responsible for pollinating, you know, one out of every three bites of food on our table. And we started the story as a side project, um, shooting a little bit on the weekends. But eventually, Miriam and I felt it was such a vital story that we both left our jobs and devoted ourselves full time and just set out kind of with faith and uh, credit cards to make this film. And eventually, you know, the, the, the universe responded with support for us we got a big grant, and we've gotten a lot of support along the way from individuals donating to us, businesses sponsoring us, and most recently, Ellen Page, an Oscar-nominated actress who was the lead in Juno and was recently in Inception, came on board as our narrator. Wonderful. Miriam, how about you? How did you first find out about this? Well, like George said, um, we... Uh... Well, he told me about it. A friend had had told him the bees were disappearing, and George told me this. You know, this would make a good documentary. And at the time, I I wasn't aware of of how precious honeybees are. And um, uh, my background is an investigative journalist, and I started doing research and realized how profound this this story is. And and was really moved by the by the fact that the honeybees are a sister society and that they work together for for the greater good and when I found out that that one of the symptoms is uh, that the bees abandon the babies and the queen uh, I saw that as a as a parallel to us abandoning mother earth and and then the the bees literally started appearing in, in my life and and uh, and uh, I just said Set about this journey, and, and it's kind of become our life for the past three plus years. Why do you think it is, both of you, that most of us don't learn as children the critical nature of bees and how their pollination of fruits and vegetables literally can make or break humanity? Well, I think it's just an example of, of any number of things that, that people oh, yeah. aren't informed of. You know, um, I think we see a lot of children have an inherent fondness for bees and it's amazing how many people really love honeybees and love honey of course kids love honey but i have to say that even you know i didn't know that they were responsible for all that they were that crucial to our agriculture system until i started to work on this film yeah i'd like to just add that yes there's so many things that were not um taught as a as as children there's so many negative programs that that were we adopt and and um 
you know, yes. So it's just about education. I wanted to ask you both also what your take is on genetically modified seeds and therefore foods, and if this is impacting bees as well. Well, our film just touches very briefly on genetically modified uh, foods. Certainly, um, it's part of the problem, and it's part of big agriculture. Uh, We know that one of the problems that we hear is that um, when... When corn, when corn tassels that the bees pollinate, a lot of times there's nothing around and they will pollinate the corn and there will be problems as a, as a consequence. So even though we don't fully explore genetically modified foods, it's, it's really part of the, the problem. I mean, I just heard yesterday that they're making a franken salmon. They're starting to make genetically modified salmon. So it's... It's just part of, like, you know, this system of of, uh, mass production and under the guise that we have to feed the world. Um, And what we're doing is we're we're messing with nature and and, uh, playing God. Actually, the genetically modified seeds have been going on for a long time. You're right, it is big agriculture. And do you know that they've actually filed patents on animals, like pigs? There's now genetically modified pigs. They have the molecular right to own pigs. It's really profound. You know, they may own honeybees. They've figured out the genome. And I've been kind of kidding around that they'll create a genetically modified honeybee and then you'll have to go to whoever to buy your bee from and it'll be kind of a disposable honeybee because um, the way the agricultural government has responded, it doesn't seem like they're they care as to the extent that they should about the disappearing honeybees. And we explore the, the very real possibility that this country will, will just be producing corn, soy, uh, and that we'll be importing our fruits and vegetables from other countries. A lot of people talk about going to Trader Joe's and how they love it, but if you start to look at the fruit and vegetable section, it starts to get a little nerve-wracking when you find out that most of the fruit and vegetables are from other countries. <laughs> It's really alarming. That's true. That's a huge issue. Um, And something that people really, we want to be aware of is that, you know, this is a matter of food security. And the whole point is that, you know, the way that big agriculture is working, um, they just want to grow corn, soy, and wheat, and cotton, and have these massive monocultures and kind of control those markets with genetically modified products. And then fruits and vegetables get tossed aside, you know, in the um, kind of big ag mentality and parlayed out to these, you know, countries like Mexico, China, Brazil, South America, Chile. Yeah. And it's really something that I think will, regardless of someone's political orientation, whether they're a conservative Republican or a liberal, um, that they'd be interested and concerned that the U.S. be able to grow its own food. I mean, we're, you know, such an advanced country, and it's almost like we're going backwards on that front. And it does very much tie into the genetically modified food issue, and Miriam and I gave that a lot of consideration, and I'm just going to respond to that quickly because it is a very very prominent issue, but really kind of deserving of a film on its own. Yes, exactly. Um, I, I think so. So we, we, we had about 10 different films worth of material, uh, and we tried to stay focused on the bees yes. as our guideline, but we're very concerned about genetically modified foods. And the one thing that we have in our film that is reflective of both the policies, you know, of the U.S. government and the governments in Europe, the governments in Europe uh, don't allow a lot of countries 